Kay Lee Hammer. Um, you you want to make sure you want to help them grow as players as much as possible, right? Because if you could put if you put winning if you put winning on secondary and then you you put their skills and you, you put their skills development higher on the list of the things that you, you the goal to be for the end of the season, right? Because 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 then. What, what they're going to find in, in the spring is that all the parents are going to notice that they're going to be much better in the spring if they see all the things that you do with them in the indoor. So I, I would focus on, on, on fundamentals, right? F fundamentals are timeless. And what I mean is uh, uh, teaching them, for, firstly, teaching them a world-class warm-up. And why I think that's so important is not only to prevent from injuries, but if you could, right, if you find some world-class warm-ups on, online, and I'll, I'll, I'll send some. I'll send some to you as well. Is that they're gonna they're gonna start to develop um, confidence and awareness even before the game has started, and that's gonna uh, that's gonna spill over onto their play. So it's also it's also gonna be intimidating for an opposing team when you notice that the other team's warm up is very high level, right? High dynamic dynamic movement, uh, you know, ba balance and different ranges of motion. So I'll send some stuff over just just so you could give them a foundation for some high quality um, movement from some world class movers. Second thing is, just because you don't have rebounders or walls to use, um, my question to you is, do you, it, are the balls they're using in the games, is it a futsal ball or is it just a, a, a ball size one through five ball and you're playing indoor, right? Because because that actually matters a little bit through for my suggestion, but, um, I would start to first, um, assuming you, you do this world-class warm-up, juggling. I think juggling games and have them developing the juggling is timeless because because juggling is the foundation for passing, shooting, and to a degree dribbling. Just the timing aspect of it, right? It's juggling is rhythmic passing and rhythmic shooting. So if you could split them up into into pairs and just go and even with or without a bounce, it does, you know they don't have to be. They don't have to even keep the ball up ten times for you guys to really develop your juggling skills, right? Like the whole session, all your practice sessions should be getting. They should be getting oh, thousands and thousands and thousands of touches. It's like in 45. If you could get 60 touches in one minute, that means in 45 in 45 minutes. Assuming your practice is going to be for. 45 minutes to, to an hour to an hour 15 minutes long they should be getting at least close to 3,000 touches in a session that, that would be ideal because in a game you're only going to get less than 200 touches so each one of those touches is precious um, so so <clears throat> indoor um, okay okay you said they're 14 years old, I believe. So, yeah, if they're 14, then you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta run it like a and their their skills their skills and drills aren't the best, and you gotta run it like a skills and drills clinic, right? You can't be running it like a team like a team training because it sounds like they're not fully developed in terms of dribbling, juggling, passing, and shooting, right? And so so I'll give you both routes. If you think that their fundamentals are great. Then your 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 practice should look like this. This is what I would I would suggest: warm up, possession, finishing on goal, crossing and finishing, and then playing to big goals for the last 15 to 20 minutes of practice. Bring the goals in as close close together, and have them rotating, king of the hill style. Right, three teams rotating, and the team that's sitting out, you want them as bumpers on the outside of the field with one touch. Right, neutral players, and the reason you do that is because if you only split the team up into two different teams to play each other and one team scores there's no there's nothing gained and nothing lost right it's just a point on the board but if you have three teams rotating on the game field at the end of practice this is going to cultivate a high level of competition because players who love to play love to play and they don't want to step off the field and when you're off the field you want to get back on fast so bumper players keeps it keeps the bumper players engaged because they just want to they just want to get back on the field so they're going to give they're going to give good passes right they're going to be good connector players for the for the players on the field and 
and the players on the field are gonna try their best to beat each other because they don't want to get off and they want to right they want to stay on f for more games S so so you know th th that's that's what I that, that that's the format possession right warm up possession finishing on goal crossing and finishing um, um, playing playing to playing to goals on a short field three teams rotating but but um, it might not make sense to do crossing and finishing as I think about it, right? Because if the, if the field is so small, especially an indoor, I think then I think you should do what's called the Tom Turnbull uh, tr training session, which looks like this. It looks it's warm up, ball skills mastery. So I'm talking cover. You could do covert coaching. It's got a great progression of ball skills, mastery moves, and then it's dribbling sequences. Dribbling sequences are like you go like outside, outside, inside, outside, inside with one foot, and then the other foot. Right, the last touch comes across the body, and then with the other foot you go outside, outside, inside, outside, inside, and then back to the other foot. And the whole team is doing this in a in kind of a tight area, and it's going to force them just to get a lot of touches. And dribbling sequences allow players to really develop their ball skills because you're not thinking about where the ball is going to be, right? It's a rhythmic pattern, which means when they get back onto the field, they're going to be able to dance around defenders more effortlessly, right? So ball mastery, dribbling sequences, then you could do different types of juggling games. One great juggling game is called the barrel game, and you get a garbage can and you put it in the center of the, the room or the field or whatever, and you have all the players sta stand in a big ring around them, and you gotta decide if their skills are good enough where they need a bounce or no bounce, right? So you say, you could do, you start with a, with a bounce, so you say, okay, everyone juggle the ball into the barrel with a bounce, right? So everyone's gonna be bumping into each other, they're gonna be yelling at each other, it's gonna be chaos, right? So, so you go, this is so it goes. Right foot bounce, right foot bounce, right foot in, right? And then they go, then, so you, you teach them this progression that be in the, one of the first practices, and then they go left foot bounce, left foot bounce, left foot in, and then you do alternating, right foot bounce, left foot bounce, right foot bounce, left foot in, and then you do right thigh bounce, right thigh bounce, right thigh in, and then left thigh bounce, left thigh bounce, left thigh in, and then alternating thighs. You finish with any body part you want, with or without a bounce. And if everyone can do that, with a bounce, then the next step of the progression is, can everyone do that without a bounce, right? So it's right foot, right foot, right foot, in. Left foot, left foot, left foot, in. Alternating, right thigh, left thigh, both thighs, alternating, and then finish with every body part, any body part you want, no bounce. And and what, if you can allow, if you teach them how the, how the progression works and let them be accountable for themselves to a degree, then you can, you, you don't, you let them go you let them hit the progression at their earliest convenience. So for example, like if, if I were to use the whistle and restrict all the players' touches and Sammy's slowing down and even though, you know, Ricky's done, you wanna let them go through the whole progression at their own speed or else their progress is gonna be restricted by other players' progress, if that makes sense, right? So, but you, you gotta, you gotta, in the beginning, show them what the progression looks like at first, right? And they gotta see, and it's helpful if you can do this because monkey see monkey principle if you can't demonstrate this effectively it'll be more it's more difficult to teach it I'm not saying it's not possible but it's nice to see your coach doing the drill that they expect you to do ideally perfectly right so um, okay so then so then the last thing is 1v1 to cones with a smaller ball right so you have a line in, the, in your gym your indoor gym or your turf gym or whatever and then you put you put cones like a few yards apart on the line, and then a couple yards away, you line up the same thing of cones, e equal distance apart from all the other cones, and this sets up little grids. So if you don't have enough cones, you could do s split the teams up into twos, right? And then everyone's going two v two partners to cones. And if you you know even limited on more cones, then you need th three players, like three v three. But ideally, each player has their cone they're defending and they're going back and forth against another player, one, one v one, trying to knock each other's cone over, right? You want a cone that's a little taller, 